Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This lecture about the endocrine system are prepared for the second year pharmacy students, especially. Although uh, other uh, students, they can benefit from these lectures. Anyway, these are the systems which form the human body. Skeletal system, cardiovascular system, respiratory system, digestive system, urinary system, endocrine, reproductive, lymphatic, and immune systems. And each system has its own functions. From these systems, nervous system and endocrine systems, these two systems are called control systems. It means that these systems, they control the human body. Nervous system for immediate action, usually, and in the prime system for delayed action. Now we will compare these two systems. And this table shows the comparison of the nervous system and endocrine system regulation of homeostasis. It means that how these two systems do control the human body. One for immediate action, the nervous system, and endocrine usually for delayed action. There's the mechanism of control. You know the neurotransmitters released in response to nerve impulses. While in the crisis system, hormones delivered into the blood, and these hormones circulate in the blood till they reach their target tissues. Cells affected by the nervous system. Muscle cells, gland cells, and neurons. While in the endocrine system, the cells affected virtually all body cells. The type of action that results in the nervous system, muscular contraction or glandular secretion while in the endocrine system, changes in metabolic activities. Time to onset of action, typically within milliseconds. It means immediate action. Why the endocrine system usually delayed action, but sometimes seconds or hours second, you remember the adrenal hormone. The duration of action in the nervous system generally brief and in the endocrine system generally longer. Glands in the body, either endocrine gland or exocrine gland. You see endocrine glands, these are the cells of the endocrine glands, they release the hormones into blood capillaries, then the hormones circulate in the blood to reach the target tissues. While the exocrine, you see, the gland there is the secretion into ducts. These ducts, either inside the body, similar to the stomach, intestines, or outside the body, sweating glands. These glands, endocrine glands, they release their hormone into the blood. They are called classic endocrine glands. Classic endocrine glands. 
and the hormones also are called classic hormones. It means that there are some other hormones, not the classic. You see, these are the classic endocrine gland and classic hormones released directly into the blood. But sometimes the gland releases the hormone or the hormone just around the target tissue. And the hormone affects the same tissue of the gland. This is called autocrine. Autocrine gland and autocrine delivery or autocrine hormones. Sometimes the gland releases the hormones into the interstitial spaces, affecting the neighboring cells. This is called paracrine. Paracrine gland and paracrine delivery. Four. Sometimes the hormones are produced by neurons. These are of two types. This neuron produces the hormone or hormones into the blood. And the second neuron produces the hormones or the hormone into the cleft, then affecting the postsynaptic cells. These hormones are called neurohormones, and these glands are called neuroendocrine glands. You see, in some mammals or insects, there are glands in the body or on the body. These glands, they produce hormones. These hormones are volatile, released into the environment and affecting the olfactory cells in another individual. Affecting the other individual or other mammals. These hormones are called pheromones. Produced by pheromonal cells or endocrine cells. This is called pheromonal delivery. And then you see there are five types of endocrine cells and five types of hormones. And then these are the physiological, physiological effects of hormones on the body functions. First, the hormones, they affect the metabolism. Regulate metabolic processes the rate of synthesis of and degradation of carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids. Some other hormones, they affect the reproduction. Without this hormone, no reproduction. We'll come to that when we talk about the reproductive systems. Some hormones, they affect the digestion, control digestive processes, including gut mortality and secretion of digestive enzymes by gastric acid and by carbonate. Blood circulation hormones, some hormones, they affect the blood circulation, such as regulation of blood pressure by altering cardiac output, vascular constriction, blood volume, the, the control of water excretion by the kidneys. Other hormones, they affect the transport of substrates to tissues or blood composition, regulate blood plasma concentration of glucose, 
minerals, gases, blood cells, water, and hydrogen ions. Others they play a role in the defense against pathogens, regulate immune systems, responses including leukocyte activation, inflammation, antibody production, and fever. Many hormones they affect growth, control, cell division, and differentiation. And also other hormones, they affect the stress responses, regulate the body's response to stress. And some hormones, they affect their behavior, control sexual and social behavior. And then these are the general functions of the hormones. How about the chemistry of the hormones? You see from this table that the hormones are classified into three categories. Proteins, whatever glycoproteins or polypeptides, amino acid derivatives, and steroids. And then you see the chemistry of the hormones are classified into three categories, proteins, amino acid derivatives, and steroids. You see, almost all the hormones are proteins. Little amino acid derivatives, such as catecholamines and thyroid hormones. And also little steroids, such as male hormones, female hormones, and adrenal cortex hormones. And don't forget the vitamin D. And then these are, or, or this is the classification of the hormones, or the chemistry of the hormones. Proteins, amino acid derivatives, and steroids. Sometimes, when cells in the body exposed to X hormone for long duration, these cells, the response decreases because the number of the receptor decreases as well as the affinity of the receptors to the hormone. This is called down regulation. Down regulation. When cells exposed to X hormone or hormones for longer duration. At the end, the cell response decreases either by the reduction of the receptors or by reduction in the affinity of the receptors to bind the hormones. Then these individuals advised uh, to do activities such as those they have diabetes to, to have exercise, uh, to go on diet, and to reduce in weight. This is just for example. After some time, they have normal weight. Uh, then, the number of the receptors in these cells increases. And the hormones, they function properly. This is called upregulation. This is called upregulation. And as you see, sometimes the cells affected by the hormones, either they decrease the sensitivity of the cells to the effect of the hormone or to increase the activity of the cells to that hormone. This is the down regulation and up regulation.
is that now you understand that the hormone does not function unless it finds the receptor. Is that the hormone, when it finds the receptor, binds with the receptor, then functions. How? By activation of G proteins in the cell membrane. These G proteins, each G protein is composed of three subunits, alpha, beta, gamma. The active part of the G protein is alpha. This complex hormone receptor, when activates the G protein, alpha suplex the active subunit. Then alpha binds with GTP. Alpha GTP activates adrenaline cyclase. This adrenaline cyclase, this enzyme, produces cyclic MP from ATP. This is the second messenger. Without production of this second messenger, this hormone does not function. And then you see, the hormone needs first the receptor and second needs the production of the second messenger. When the second messenger either exits or low, if there is excess of cyclic AB, then inactivated by phosphodiesterase enzyme. If there is no excess, then this enzyme does not function. These hormones, which they find their recept the receptors on the cell membrane, the protein hormones, these large molecules, cannot penetrate cell membrane or a nuclear membrane. And these protein hormones, some they produce cyclic AMP, just one second machine. When this second messenger is produced, then activation of the enzymes and the hormone function. Some other protein hormones, they produce two second messengers. It means that these hormones, they need calcium to function. The same hormone receptor activation of G proteins, but instead of adrenaline cyclase, phospholipase C is activated. Then two second messengers are produced in acetyl triphosphate and the glycerol. In acetyl triphosphate increases the calcium and the glycerol activates the enzymes. Then the physiological action of that hormone. And then you see protein hormones, either they produce one second messenger or two second messengers. All the receptors are on the cell membrane. The remain hormones, amino acid derivatives, and steroids. Amino acid derivatives, small, and steroid lipid solids. They penetrate cell membrane and nuclear membrane. Of course, sometimes the hormones, whatever, they find the, the receptors either inside the cells or inside the nucleus. These hormones, the small hormones or steroids, they activate the DNA along the hormone plus the receptor. 
activate this complex DNA, producing messenger RNA as second messenger, then the hormone or the hormones function. Those amino acid derivatives such as thyroid hormones and lipid soluble such as male sex hormones or female sex hormone or adrenal cortex hormone. And this is the mechanism of the hormones. They bind with the receptors, they produce second messengers. We need the hormones in minute quantities, in, in very low level. Therefore, the human body needs the need to regulate the hormone secretion. Regulation of hormone secretion produced by either feedback control or neural control or chronotropic control. Almost all hormones controlled by the feedback control. Feedback control. Feedback control, either hormone, 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 the stimulus, hormone, the response, or substrate hormone, stimulus, substrate, hormone, the response, or mineral hormone, mineral stimulus and hormone response. Is that, as you see, the relationship between the response and the stimulus, this is called feedback control. Feedback control. The relationship between the response hormone and the substrate stimulus or hormone mineral. Hormone response mineral stimulus. This relationship is called feedback control. Feedback control, two types. Either the, the response decreases the stimulus, this is called negative feedback control. Negative feedback control. You see, this hormone, hormone, hormone stimulus, hormone response. There are many examples. The substrate hormone, such as glucose, insulin. Mineral hormone, such as parathyroid hormone, and uh, uh, calcium and parathyroid hormone. And then feedback control, either negative feedback control or positive feedback control. Positive feedback control, when the response increases the stomach. When the response increases the stomach, such as in delivery, the more and more uterine contraction, oxytocin hormone is released. Till the delivery occurs. This is positive feedback control. When the delivery ends, then the oxytocin release stops. Either feedback control, either negative feedback control or positive feedback control. Either most of the hormones are regulated by the feedback control. The neural control, there are conditions such as pain, emotion, sexual excitement, fright, injury, and stress, all can modulate hormone secretion through neural mechanism. These conditions, they cause the release of either adrenaline or acetylcholine or dopamine or serotonin, etc. The third type of control, the chronotropic, related to timing. Then many hormones are secreted in distinct parcels, either as oscillating or Passes, but this diurnal rhythm, the level of the hormone, 
increases all the creases during the 24 hours. This is, let us say, this is an example for the, sick, the level of the hormone during that 24 hours. You see the typical variation in growth hormone. This shows the linear rhythm. The level of the hormone during the 24 hours from 8 a.m. to the next 8 a.m. You see, at noon, the growth hormone is high. Also, during sleep. And this is the level of the hormone during the 24 hours. Or sleep wake, sleep wake cycle. The same that the previous example we can use it for the sleep wake. You 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 saw that the level of the growth hormone at noon and during sleep. Some hormones secretion is related to the duration of the menstruation in the females. We will see that. Or some hormones they increase or decrease during the seasons. Season and rhythm. Some hormones are high or low during winter or spring or summer or uh, during the uh, all the four seasons, autumn, such as. Or developmental rhythm. Growth hormone, you remember the level of the growth hormone changes during the development. We see that during the growth hormone during childhood, puberty, or uh, during the old age. And then these are the, the types of regulation of hormone secretion, either feedback control or neuron control or chronotropic control. Just to have an idea about the The loops, negative feedback loops, regulating hormone secretion. You see, this is the hypothalamus, produce hormone, and this hormone affects the same hypothalamus. You remember the autocrine. This is called ultra short loop. When the hormone from hypothalamus affects the secretion of the same hormone. Or the hormone from hypothalamus affects the pituitary. The hormone from pituitary affects the secretion of the hormone from the stimulus from hypothalamus. This is called short loop. Short loop. Or hypothalamus, pituitary, and thyroid gland, peripheral gland. Then the hormone from peripheral gland affects the pituitary short loop and the hormone from hypothalamus long loop. And then you see the loops in the negative feedback control, three loops, ultra short loop, short loop, and long loop. Sometimes, or almost actually, a hormone can influence the activity of another hormone at a given target cell in one of three ways. That hormonal interactions, three types, either permissive or synergism or antagonism. These are fat cells affected by thyroxine hormone. No result, no release of any fatty acid. The same cells affected by adrenaline, very little fatty acids are released. But 
when the same cell is affected first by thyroxine, then by adrenaline, then adrenaline functions properly. In this case, adrenaline needs the action of thyroxine yes, so as to function properly. This is called permissive hormonal interaction. Permissive hormonal interaction. When a hormone needs the action of another hormone previously, then the hormone functions properly. This is called permissive hormonal interaction. Second hormonal interaction occurs when the actions of several hormones are complementary and their combined effect is, is greater than the sum of their separate effects. An example is the synergistic action of follicle stimulating hormone, testosterone, both of which are required to maintain the normal rate of sperm production. Synergism probably result from each hormone's influence on the number of the or affinity of, rece of receptors for other hormones. And then this is the second type of hormonal interaction. The synergism. When many hormones they function together so as the so as to produce the best result. They complement each other. They, they function together. Synergism. Antagonism occurs when one hormone causes the loss of another hormone's receptor. Or, let us say, another example, very clear. When the action of a hormone opposes the action of another hormone, such as parathyroid hormone increases blood calcium level and calcitonin decreases blood calcium level. And then calcitonin opposes the action of parathyroid hormone. This is antagonism. Or insulin, insulin decreases blood glucose level and glucagon increases blood glucose level. And then insulin or glucagon opposes the action of insulin and calcitonin opposes the action of parathyroid hormone.